Will to Lead 2024, The Way of Wisdom. Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we ask that as you speak through me, as you teach us about goal setting, that we will comprehend it the way you set goals in the name of Jesus. I will be able to run with them and deliver the end of 2024 in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So very quickly, I've, this has been titled The Way of Vision. The way of vision. Now, what does vision, what does goal setting have to do with growth? Everything. Everything. Straight from scriptures, there is a um there is a story I will come to after these objectives. The things we are, these are the objectives for today to understand the benefits of setting goals. What are goals? What's the relationship between goals and growth? Relationship between goals and wisdom, things to set before setting your goals. And this year is the main reason why most people struggle with their goals. Because they set goals without setting distance. It's just like you want to build a house and you find a piece of land and you just begin to put the blocks on top of it. It will fall if there is no foundation. Those things are the main reasons why people write the same New Year resolutions every year. So to understand how to set the right goals and to understand how to keep your goals alive all year round. Now, goals and growth have everything to do with each other. Luke 13 verse 8, Jesus told a parable of a man who went to a tree and didn't find fruit on it. And he wanted to he ask the husband, man, that's the farmer, to cut it down. And the farmer said something. He said, let it alone, sir, this one year. And I will dig around it and dung it. And let's see what becomes of it after one year. Very, very intelligent farmer. So he looked at the tree. Has never produced a, a seed in its entire life. Let's assume that was the case. Actually, in the last three years, because the scripture says, these three years I have come seeking fruit and I find nothing. And the farmer diagnosed intelligently that the reason. <laughs> that the reason is because of the environment. He said, I will dig around it. I will dig. So it is not the, the desire to bear fruit. The desire is there. So could it be that the reason why you set, kept setting the same goals every year is because you have not dug around yourself to replace the sand with dung? Because dung is meant to make growth faster. Another thing I want to point out from that story said, let it alone one more year. So every year, God comes back to check on you. He himself comes to check. So setting goals is a yearly thing from scriptures. And the third thing here, because I know I'm pressed for time, I will try to be as, ex as um, brief as possible and still try to explain as much as possible. One of my favorite scriptures, Luke 14, verse 28 to 30, I will paraphrase it. He said, if a man wants to build a house, he said, does he not first sit down and plan? And then the second one is what I want to dwell on. He said, if a man wants to go to war, I think that should be verse 29 and 30-ish. He said, does he not first sit down and consult with himself if he is able to defeat 20,000 soldiers with the 10,000 he has? So the first thing and most important thing in going to war is sitting down. You see, the most important warfare weapon is not the latest jet, it's the mind. And every year is like, it's like a warfare. At the end of the, <laughs> whether you understand or you agree in a war or not, at the end of the year, your report card will be given to you. And I see God helping us to maximize 2024 in Jesus' name. Benefits of goal setting. I want to use the sun as the illustration here. We've been hearing of global warming for the past um, few decades, that the world is getting warmer because um, science people will be able to explain better. It's been a while I did chemistry, but I'll try to do my best. Because of the fumes and the carbon monoxide and the things we burn that have been destroying the atmosphere. As the sun begins to get warmer, one thing 
happens, the intensity of the sun increases. Anyway, with how intense the sun is becoming, nobody has ever walked under the sun and gotten burnt. Like you're just walking and you caught flames, you caught fire. As powerful as if you come close to the sun, we all know what will happen. But why is it that the sun is unable to replicate the same power here on earth? It lacks intensity. And that's because the sun is diffused. Is there anybody who is not setting goals is like the sun, very distant from its goal, from the thing it's, it's meant to. You will notice with the same sun, if you get a magnifying glass and put a piece of paper and you set it properly, it will set the paper aflame. And the only reason is because you've been able to focus that power until you are able to focus all the energy you have been given on a particular goal. Until you are able to focus all the energy you have been given on a particular goal, you will not get the best of it. At the end of the year, it would either have been abandoned or forgotten. Most people at the end of, most people start every year with a list of resolutions. At this year, I think 2024 resolution, I don't know if it's globally, but I know in, in a part of Africa, in Nigeria, it is no grief for anybody. So let's assume people get their goal setting books and they write one, no grief for the devil. Two, no grief for unemployment. You just write everything like that. Let me tell you what will happen for, <laughs> for everyone who is not agreeing for anybody now. By April, they'll begin to agree with, <laughs> with everybody. <laughs> and the reason I'm laughing is because you don't have what it takes to not agree. It's easy to talk. Talk is cheap, they say. But until you understand these things. And the second thing intensity does, um, um, focus does, or setting goals does, is it gives you speed. It gives you speed. Have you ever taken a bus or a train or a public transport that stops at every bus stop in the world? You would know at some point it might even frustrate you that when you drive, you get there a lot faster. The reason that bus... That, that boss becomes frustrating is because it doesn't have a goal. It has several goals. So it's just stopping everywhere. It's the same thing with many people. The things you want to do this year are so many that by the time you do half of them, your energy is expended. And it's the same thing with the sun. Because the sun spreads itself so much, its effectiveness is greatly reduced. And the third benefit of setting goal is efficiency. 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 Goal setting reduces wastage many people waste the most precious commodity on earth every day what's that commodity time because they don't have goals time can be wasted energy will be wasted and resources will be squandered when you do not set goals when you do not set goals one you will lack intensity you will do things like an unmotivated person because the pressure will not be there. So you would lack speed because anything would easily derail you. You will stop everywhere. And the third thing is you will lack efficiency. Now, three things I want us to note. And I found this in, um, I found this research. I think I have the reference at the end of this slide. The slide should be shared with us at the end of the teaching. 92% of people do not achieve their new year goals. Science has discovered. I found it on incorporated.com. That's inc.com. They do not achieve their new year goals. That's only 8% of people are able to churn those things they've written on paper into reality. The second thing is people who set, who get goal setting right have the opportunity to live twice. What do I mean by that? You know, the people who are closest to this reality are architects. Before you see the house, the architect has seen it. The architect already lives in the pleasure of a finished house before the first block is laid because he has laid everything on paper or on his computer. And that's the same thing with someone who has understood goal setting and knows how to make it come to reality. At the end of the year, where you will be is not when somebody begins to say you would have this. It's not a prophecy again. You're already there on paper. But the challenge is that most people do not know how to bring paper into reality. And I pray that we would be able to convert most of our paper desires into reality this year in the name of Jesus. And the final and most important thing I want us to note is that this leadership and goal-setting thing is not really about you. 
it, come to think of it, you just come to earth, you're born, you live for a while, and you die. Is it really about you? Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23 says, Ten men shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, and will say, We will go with you because we have heard that God is with you. It is a war of kingdoms. It is about the kingdom of God. This is why it is very, very essential for you to get this goal setting thing right. The people in the world, the, the scripture says, the children of this world are wise in their own eyes. They get this goal setting thing and they do things with it. When you are able to get goal setting right, you'll be amazed. Abraham got goal setting right. That's why we are, we are called. Everyone wants to be called a child of Abraham today. How do I know Abraham got goal setting right? They captured his son, his, his nephew, Lot. And Abraham had the goal to recover his nephew. Did he recover him? He did. God told Abraham, God set the goal for Abraham. And he would give him a child. And he waited 25 years. You see, even working with God takes the understanding of goal setting. It is about a kingdom. It is about a kingdom. And in goal setting, you need to come to a place of negotiation. Negotiation power is one thing God began to teach me recently. It's one of the strongest power anybody can have. If you can negotiate effectively, 2024 will be your year. There is nothing that can stop it from being your year. I'll give you two examples from scriptures. Joseph was a very poor negotiator. And that was why even though he rescued the whole nation from captivity, I mean from, yeah, from famine, in Four centuries, his own people were back into captivity because he negotiated poorly. Jacob is one of the best negotiators the scripture has ever, <laughs> ever recorded. First, he negotiated with Esau. Maybe he cheated Esau quite all right. But he negotiated, very, very smart negotiator. He said, I will trade food for your birthright. I mean, and to prove that it was not a one-off thing, when he was going to get back at Laban, negotiation, he said, okay, don't give me money. Let's do it this way. These cartoons. If you understand negotiation, there is nothing that can stop you from maximizing 2024. That was one of the first things I thank God that I understood slightly when I began my career. So one of the things I look forward to the most was conversation about salary. How much do you want to get paid? Many people go there with a figure in mind. When, you, when they ask you that question, let me just touch on this slightly. It is not really about money because you can get paid in several currencies. God will help us understand this goal setting thing in Jesus' name. So the major thing I said, people, the major thing I said, people um, do not get right before setting their goals. If you can get these five things correctly, I'm very convinced that by the end of the year, most of your goals will be ticked off. One is association. And I have used going to London here. For people who do not live in the UK, if you are going from Coventry or Birmingham to London, you are going south to the very bottom of the country or just a few towns away from the, from the end of the country. Now, if you are going to Scotland, you are going up north. Now, imagine you are going to London. And this is the good news. Everybody here, let's take your goal, one of your goals as London. And I will use this single illustration to go through all of these five. One of your goal is London, maybe to read 20 books or to get a particular amount or to get a raise or to win 20 souls. That goal is London. The first thing is association. You are the driver, you have your car. You now pick up somebody who wants to drop off at Scotland. Whether you like it or not, you first drive up to Scotland. And by the time you get to Scotland, the year has ended. This is how most people lose their goals. There is no anointing that can help a person working with the wrong person to achieve their goals. Because it will first drive you off the path of your goal. By the time you get off that path, time is up. The second thing is information. If you are going to London, you have to know where London is. And um, I had this a few years ago while I was still in Nigeria. When you want to ask someone for direction in Nigeria, one very important thing to look at is how the person is dressed. It's very important because <laughs> if you ask somebody who is not well-dressed, maybe the person is out of his mind. The person can point in the opposite direction of where you want to go. So what do I, how does this relate? Ask somebody 
who dresses or you can see evidently that this person has been to where you want to go ask people who know about london how to get to london not people who know about scotland not people who know about glasgow the third thing here is focus focus and we we saw an illustration earlier if on your way to london you want to stop everywhere you want to pick up every hitchhiker um a hitchhiker is somebody who stands by the way and just stops cars to say uh how do they used to whatever place the person is going the person just waves down the car you want to help everybody along the way you know achieve your goals should i say this i don't know if we'll be able to receive it well but i will say it you will struggle to achieve your goals if you are not selfish you will struggle to achieve your goals if you are not and one of the things to be selfish with god expects you to be selfish with time because God himself only allots you one 20 years maximum. Focus. 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 And the fourth thing is desire. How badly do you want to get to London? I remember once I was traveling from London to this place where I was. The trains were on strike and I had to get here. It took me eight hours to get. The journey was usually an hour and a half or so. But it took me from afternoon till late at night. And it was because I really wanted to get home. I would not sleep anywhere else. You see, if you do not have a very strong desire for your goal, if you do not set your desire before you set your goals, if you are going to London, what will happen is, um, I'm looking for a place on the way to London. You will get to Milton Keynes and book a hotel. You, you will pack your goals in May if your desire is not strong enough. And desire and determination are very correlated. Billy Graham was the one who said this very important statement. Not to be determined is to be determined not to. There is no middle ground. You have either made up your mind to get it, or you have made up your mind not to get it. So when you are setting goals, people will say, is he a do or die affair? Tell them yes. How was Paul able to accomplish much? Paul was a man of dangerous determination. Even when Paul, <laughs> at the point when his determination got a hold of him, Paul wanted to go to Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost said, Paul, it's a dangerous journey. Paul said, Holy Spirit, stay out of it. If you read, if you read from Acts chapter 18 to about 22, I'm not saying I have that kind of determination, but I'm saying no wonder he was able to accomplish much. Determination. Make up your mind before you put your pen on paper. And we get to that. Many people set goals that they are trying to achieve. Let me give you a newsflash. You will not achieve them. If you are only trying, from the point of putting your paper, your pen on paper, those goals are just cancel the goals because there's no point. Nobody ever tried to become a success and became a success. You don't become a success by trying. You don't achieve your goals by trying. You achieve your goals by dogged determination. Now, how do you get this goal setting thing right? Sit down first. Sit down first. That's the most important thing. Sit down first. Sitting is a very deep thing. I'll give us three scriptures. The scripture says in Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of discomfort. So that means where that man sits will determine his end. The second scripture I would give us, I don't know, I can't remember where specifically, but Jesus wanted to feed 5,000 people. Let me see the response in the chat box. What was the first thing Jesus asked those people to do? Jesus wanted to feed 5,000 people. And what was the first thing he asked them to do? Is anybody still with me? Sit. He asked them to sit down. To sit down. To sit down. That means even before God attends to you, he expects you to sit. Before inspirations flow, he expects you to sit. Many people are, <laughs> they are physically seated, but in their mind they are standing up. It won't work. Sitting down is not just a physical posture. It's not just a physical posture. And the third thing, the third scripture was the one I quoted earlier. It said, the man who wants to go to war has to first sit down. Has to first sit down. And then the scripture tells us where that sitting down is. In the mind. Your mind has to be at rest. You have to, you have to really withdraw. Don't just set your goals because you're under pressure. You have to be calm. 
you have to really settle down because it's when you settle down you look at that goal and say mm, is this really my goal or i'm deceiving myself because most of the things people call goals that they have to repeat the following year self-deception self-deception so you see somebody who wants to maybe make a first class for instance at the same time wants to make 20 friends that year when you sit down, you'll be able to see where your goals are clashing. You'll be able to see your goal that will prevent your goal from being achieved. So people set goals that cancel out the first goal. Sit down first. For instance, pastor just told us to set a goal to read 90, to read the Bible for 90 minutes this year, um, every day this year, and also to, to build on a skill for two hours or read something for two hours every day. At the same time, someone cannot add to that goal. Watch all the latest series. You see, the thing about watching series, it is not bad. But by the time you finish that series, when you pick the book, it will not enter. It will take you another 30 minutes to journey into focus. It's good to relax with movies or whatever you relax with at the right time. But we need to understand that until you sit down, you will not see the goals that are canceling out your goals. The second thing is determine areas of your life you need to set goals in or for. Areas of your life where you need improvement. Just look at your life. For instance, you, you are getting it right career-wise, but your relationship with people is poor. Or maybe you have a good relationship with people, but financially, it's not working out. What you need to do is mark out that area as an area to work on and then put goals in place that will bring things together and any the 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 i didn't write this year so it's very important for me to say it now that i remember see the greatest benefit you get from setting goals is not that you tick the goals off at the end of the year while that is good it is the person you become in the process of achieving that goal and a wise man once said he had a goal to get a million dollars he got a million dollars at the age of 35, I think it was 25 when, at the age of 30, it was 25 when he said to go. And because that was his first time having a million dollars, he blew it within a year. But he said, when he blew the go and he came to his senses, he said, to even write a million dollars did not take him anything again. Why? The person he became in the process of achieving that one million dollars stayed with him, even though the one million dollars left. So he could get it over and again. Any mountain you have climbed, you're already bigger than it. Any mountain you have climbed has made you a person who can climb that mountain over and again. And the third, um, okay, I think those are the two major things I've written down. And, and the third one I mentioned is the person you become in the process of achieving your goals. The person is more important than the achievement. The person is more important than the achievement. So we have smarter goals and we have dumb goals. Now, I use the word smarter because that ER is probably the main reason why many smart goals become dumb goals. Because if your goal is smart and at the end of the year it's still on paper, it was a dumb goal in the first place. But we'll come to the ER. Many of us have seen the acronym SMART before, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. And an example, I've used examples of dumb goals that I've also countered on the next slide with examples of smart goals. An example of a dumb goal you can set you say complete about 10 books at the end of the year. It's not specific. At the moment you begin to use about, around, words that do not eat on the target, that goal is not specific. And what's an example of a specific goal? We'll see that on the next slide. Measurable. Example, deliver three good projects this year. Wh what do you mean by good? I think a good way to know if your goal is measurable is check the adjective. I think it's good an adjective. Please help me, English people. And I live in England. There's no me in no English. <laughs> it's good an adjective, please. Okay, let's leave that and go back to the main thing. Deliver three good projects this year. Okay, it is. Thank you. So what do you mean by good? You have to put metrics around it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have to put a metrics around it. So a way to know if your goal is measurable is look at that adjective. Can you, okay, look at that adjective and travel to the end of the year and see if the adjective 
is measurable by anything. If you can, if you can describe your goal or interpret, yeah, that's the word, interpret your goal in terms of the adjective, you will know that the adjective is useful. And I would recommend as much as possible. I know it's difficult to measure qualitative goals. Put a number to it. Numbers make goals measurable. We'll see another example of a measurable goal on this same subject matter on the next slide. The third is achievable. For example, you are getting paid £30,000 a year. And by the end of this year, you want to have paid £30,000 in deposit for your house. How? For goodness sake, how? Is it that you will not eat for the entire year? Or some things are not just realistic. If somebody, for instance, um, is in Canada, was born and bred a Canadian citizen. And that one is even far because Canada is a Commonwealth nation. Somebody, for instance, is in China, born and bred a Chinese citizen, and his goal in his lifetime is to be the king of England or the queen of England. Some things are not just realistic. That leads us to the next one, realistic. So achievable and realistic are quite close. But your goal can be unachievable. Your goal cannot be unrealistic and achievable. But it can be unachievable and realistic. It's possible that your goal is unachievable, but it is realistic. And the reason why most times people's goals are unachievable is because they have not grown to that level. Set goals for levels to which you have grown. Don't try to jump levels. Because the child came first in primary six or in year six as it is in the UK, if you automatically take the child to year nine, you have set the child up for failure. That child will live his life thinking he cannot do anything good again. Just because you have excelled. Ah, this year, I read 20 books. Next year, I will read 200. That is setting yourself up for failure. And the fifth one is time bound. Someone says, for instance, I want to solve all exercises in my mathematics textbook. The reason why this person will not solve all the exercises is because there is no time limit. So even when the person, like Bill Gates said, Bill Gates, people say Bill Gates, people ask Bill Gates once that, uh, okay, he actually said in one of his books, I think it's, it's I can't remember the book title now. He said, people said I drop out of school. He said, I didn't drop out. He said, I only took a break, but I've not gone back. <laughs> now, there's no time. He has not put the time to going back to school. So that is not a goal. That is not a goal. Now, smarter goals, for instance, specific, complete 12 books. Remove all the, the about. 12 books by the 31st of December. Specific. Put a number to it. You know, the, the, one of the benefits of spe setting specific and measurable goals is by the end of the year, just by looking at the goal and at what you've done, you know if you have failed or passed, you don't need any assessor. You don't need any assessor. Achievable. Pay a £30,000 deposit on your house in two years if your annual income is 50 k So at that point, you know you can save £15,000 per year and you'd have the deposit. So that's achievable. Achievable. Realistic. If someone wants to get a promotion to the next level at work before the end of 2023 or 2025, yeah, that, that's if you put the work to it, it might even come in 2024. But to start at an entry level position this year, I want to be the CEO next year, is not realistic. It's not realistic. And time bound. If you are solving all the exercises in your mathematics textbook, because I know we have quite a number of students here, put a time to it. If you are going to Solve all the courses in that material from that lecturer. Put a time to it. If you are going to answer all your past questions, put a time to it. The thing that benefit about putting a time to it is when somebody comes and the person says, let's go here. At that point in time, you can easily tell the person, I'm sorry. Uh, when you say I don't have time, it might even sound rude. Um, what's, what's the right way? I don't have time is still the right way, but I'm looking for a better way to express what I'm thinking. Is to say, my time is no longer mine because your time now belongs to that goal. Your time is no longer yours. At the moment you set a goal and you put a timeline to it, you have, you have given, you have sold your time. You have sold your time. So getting goals set, setting right, the emphasis on the ER now, the reason why many people's goals are not achievable or are not achieved at the end of the year, E, evaluate on the goal. Evaluate on the go. But evaluate on the go. 
Ah, thank God I have my goal setting book here. I think this is the neatest goal setting book I've ever kept. So I set goals for 2022. If you look, I, I hope, I don't think you'll be able to see the goals, which would be good. But I just want you to see the year. Ah, it's not clear. I don't think you can see it. You see 2022 goals. What you would see next is goals for the month of January. At the end of January, what I've done in that January is the ones that are breakable, I break them into January goals. At the end of January, I measure how far I've come in that goal. If I can see that by March, this goal is not achievable, I go and adjust the goal. I either adjust the goal or I magnify my drive. If I cannot increase the, if I've tried to increase the amount of time I give to that goal and it's not possible, I have to go and adjust the goal. Even at the end of the year, you'll just be looking at your goal setting book in disappointment for things you know you could have. That's if you're actually focused on your goal. For things you know that you could have improved upon. So evaluate on the goal. Eva I evaluate every month at the end of the month and I evaluate every week for my monthly goals on a particular day of the week at a particular time. It just helps you know if you are making progress or not. You see, the thing about this goal setting thing and evaluation is when you begin to slow down, you will know. You'll be able to tell when your goals will not be achieved and you'll be able to easily adjust. The final one is resolve. And I think we should be getting ready to set our goals now. If you have your goal setting books, please just get ready to. It will give us about 10, 10 minutes or so to set our goals. Resolve. Before you get started, before you put that, paper, that, that goal on paper, ask yourself sincerely, am I going to be committed to this goal? Nothing is worse than self-deception. And the thing about it is, until you talk to yourself, there is nothing anybody is saying to you that will make sense. Until you are able to tell yourself the truth, even if they bring the best speaker in the world, even if an angel is talking to you, if you are not able, ready to tell yourself the truth, it's a waste of time. I believe everybody must have advised the prodigal son. Until the day he advised himself, everybody was making noise. So be very sincere. Be brutally honest with yourself because time will be honest with you eventually. So why not save yourself the stress of time being honest with you by being honest with yourself? So please, again, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound, evaluate, and then resolve. Resolve. Don't set goals you are trying to achieve. Make up your mind that you are going to achieve them. Make up your mind that you are going to achieve them ever before you get started. Ever before you get started. Now, the final thing I have here is limit yourself to a maximum of three goals per area of your life. By the time you have five financial goals, only you, at a point it will get confusing. Except you have gotten to a point where you know, yes, you can handle it. But for most people, even at that point, simplicity is what makes goal setting beautiful. The fact that you can look at your goals and you understand them immediately. The fact that anybody can look at your goals and understand them immediately is what makes goal setting interesting. How about Einstein puts it this way? He said, if you cannot explain it to a six-year-old, you do not understand it yourself. If your goals are so complex that you will need several minutes to explain to a child, I think you should whittle them down and make them maximum three goals is enough for any area of your life. For any area and you can even bring all things under those three goals i think we'll have um a few minutes to set our goals now once we set this as we are setting these goals it's very important that i say this let god edit your goals i don't know how else to emphasize this let god edit your goals i won't set goals i remember that day clearly now 18th of february 2018 Yes, I think it was 18th of February 28th. February 2018. I wrote down those goals to the end and the only goal said cancel it. Everything. And I canceled it. And I thank God I canceled it because the plan he had for me for that year was entirely different. When you have finished setting goals, let God edit it. You set your goals, even as you begin to run with them, 
put them before God and tell him you are open to corrections. Paul always achieved his goals until the day where he told the Holy Ghost to stay out of it. He said they will go to Jerusalem and he will preach to them. Holy Ghost said they will not receive you. <laughs> he said they were still going to go regardless. When he got into Jerusalem, this is how, how much God wants to help you. Paul got into Jerusalem. The first night he passed at Jerusalem, God appeared to him in a dream. He said, leave this city. They will not receive your message. Even in Jerusalem, the Holy Ghost was still trying to edit his goals. But he didn't let him. And the story did not end well. From Acts chapter 22 to chapter 28, Paul, <laughs> Paul was in chains because of disobedience. So please let God edit your goals so you can be at the center of his will. I think one of the greatest desires of my life is to be able to say the way, the way my mentor always says, that I'm in the center of the center of the center of God's will for my life. Oh God. He's so to be able to say that nothing beats that, that confidence. So please, if you have your goal setting book, I'd like you to take them out. If you've set your goals, I would like you to begin to review them against these things, especially at the point of sincerity. Now look at them and be sincere with yourself. Are these goals or wishes? Are these goals or desires? And the things to set before your goals, remember. You are driving to London. Don't pick up somebody who wants to stay in Birmingham or who wants to go to Scotland. And, and another chat mistake people make, people make rather on this goal setting thing is trying to make it a group thing. Now you have set a goal, for instance, to read 20 books a year. You've gone to a friend, I have this goal, I want to read 20 books a year. And the friend does not willingly say, I will join you. He said, can you join me? You are, you are looking for you are trying to bring a Jonah into your ship. Because that person, you, you, now, you have not gotten there. You are not pulling a wit. Please, like I said before, be selfish. Because God expects you to be. God expects you to be. So give us the next five to ten minutes. Also know that the time we will give us here is not enough to set all your goals. So I'll just recommend, write down the key ones. I would have to 1034. That's by UK time. So 34, wherever you are, to set our goals. I will just play soft music in the background and review my own goals too. It's limited. Another thing as limited as time is energy. And there are people you should pray never to meet in your life because they are energy drainers. Some people, in terms of energy draining equivalent, they are the equivalent of having a car accident. You will not recover for years if you, if you meet some, the kind of negative vibe that they carry, and that would easily make all your goals sleep. Imagine meeting someone who makes you fall into depression. Uh, it, it could be quite um, brutal, but I've, I've made up my mind that at my place of work, I will always smile. And if I ask you how is your day, and you always respond negatively, I will not ask you again. Because I'm guarding my energy. It's the, moment every, the moment people continue to say, oh, the weather is terrible, my day is bad, you would not know, subtly, something is leaving you. Your energy is diminishing, diminishing, diminishing. And when your strength is failing, you need strength too. Jesus had a goal. His goal was understood from the beginning, very clear. All of a sudden, his strength began to fail. His goal was to die for the world. Jesus could not go to that cross until his strength was renewed. There is nothing that can make you achieve your goals without the energy required. There is a required level of energy to even read one book a week. If you cannot maintain that energy, I, I like to call it morale. If you cannot maintain that morale, if possible, cut off people till you get back your morale as soon as possible and make sure it is a quick walk. David had a goal, Goliath. As soon as he had that goal in mind, everything began to fight against his morale. His other brother said, what's your business? Did they send you here to fight? He turned away from his other brother because he was protecting his energy. He got to Saul again. So I said, you are just a youth. That was what the devil was after. Even Goliath himself. Am I a dog? Everything was around after David's energy. After David's energy. Guard your energy the way you guard your time. Guard your energy because you need it. You need it. It demands energy. Go pursue demands energy. The fifth is be accountable. Be accountable. Accountability is a way to avoid giving up. 
and I'll run through four quick things accountability does. It helps you make decisions carefully. If you know people are watching over you and someone would ask you why you did that, you, you think twice before you do it. Ask, give, inform someone you can trust. That word trust is very important about a goal you have. About a goal you have. And one of the things I would say is, and I, and I want to say this carefully, there are goals that you cannot just set. You need spiritual help. For instance, if you want to break off an addiction, it could even be addiction to phone. You need accountability. Some goals cannot be achieved on your own. Some things cannot be done in the energy of the flesh. Even God, when he was making all animals, was making them alone. When it became man, this complex being that will need to be sustained, he said, let us, let us. So accountability. So it, avoids, it helps avoid wastage of time, energy, and resources. When you're accountable to somebody, you are more careful the way you spend these things because these are the currencies of destiny. Time, energy, and resources. Remember we talked about energy drainers. And the third is, it's like having an external auditor. It makes you tighten your processes. So if you've told somebody, and one of the things that said started me on the part of reading books was I told a friend of mine that I was going to read this number of books before we came back from the holiday. If there was nothing that kept me on my toes, it was the fact that I didn't want to go back to her. And when she's asked, I will say, I, am, I tried. Just the fact that I mentioned it to her helped me. And the fourth is, it affords you help when you are down. Two are better than one. When you have somebody to talk to, when you have somebody to talk to about your goals, somebody to talk to in terms of accountability. Like I said before, don't go and get a body and call the person an accountability partner. Don't get somebody <laughs> who's, who, who does not um, recognize your goal in any form and call the person an accountability partner. Get someone of like minds. Get someone of like minds. I'd like us to pray. I'd like you to pray for yourself because you need spiritual help. We've not, we've not done this at Will to Lead before. This is the first time. But you need help to focus. You make the decision and God supplies the grace, but you need that grace. The thing is, the people in the world are using something. When someone says, I don't believe in God, and when anyone says they don't believe in God, what they're trying to say is they believe in themselves. They are their own God. So everyone believes in something. Everyone believes in something. This is your only juju, the name of Jesus. So I would like you to use your juju over your goals now. I would like us to pray this prayer. If you can omit yourself, please do. It's a very serious business. Father, in the name of Jesus, and grace me to run the year 2024 to the end with absolute focus, both in pursuit of my goals and in alignment to your wills. It says it is God which works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Let's lift up our voices in prayer. And grace me, Lord, to run 2024 to the end with absolute focus, both in pursuit of my goals and in alignment to your will. Help me, Lord. I don't want to look at these goals on paper at the end of the year. And grace me, Lord, to run 2024 to the end with absolute focus. Absolute focus, both in the pursuit of my goals and in alignment to your will. Help me, Father. If you can pray in the Spirit, please do. Brado shali panas kadiali bana lekere bredie legede. I'll give us three minutes more to pray this prayer. It is a very serious matter. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. I have chosen to stay focused. Help me to maintain this choice. Help me to maintain this choice, both in the pursuit of my goals and in alignment to your will. Help me to maintain this choice, both in the pursuit of my goals and in alignment to your will. Credo le benige li bredosh kadia, li badosha la prano setie le kete, le kete repene nika li bradosha, li fatora paraskata, le kete se le pretush kete, li kenike le preto shalia, li kanu repente, le feti bradosha lia, li kanu sala bradosha lia. Help me, Lord, to stay focused in the pursuit of my goals. I will not be derailed. I will not join with somebody going anywhere else. Help me, Father. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. 2024 will be that year for me. In the name of Jesus. 2024 will be that year for me. In the name of Jesus. 2024 will be that year for me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's give him thanks. Father, we thank you. 
Father, someone has not prayed enough. You can still go on praying, please. If you know you have not, pray as unto God. Not that you are praying now. See God and, and talk to him. Help me, Father, to stay focused, both in the pursuit of these goals and in alignment to your will. In the name of Jesus, help me, Lord, to stay focused. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. Lord, help me. In 2024, I will not be derailed. In 2024, I will not go wrong. Help me, Father, to stay focused. In the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, mighty God. For in Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. I see God helping us to stay focused in Jesus' name. It's a very spiritual thing. I remember saying that it is not about you. It is about the kingdom. Many times when people are setting goals, you think, mm, where can I get? What, what can I build? If you know the plan God has, you will, you will strategically position yourself. When the children of Israel were sent into Babylon, many of them saw it as um, into captivity. This is an opportunity. And then the king now brought them to the table. The king's food, wow. But somebody understood God's plan. And what did he do? He, he set a goal. The scripture says he proposed. Goal setting is about alignment. God is set to raise leaders for this end time. But until you can align with his will and find your place in this army, you may not be able to maximize goal setting. But I see all of us maximizing this important system in the name of Jesus. Amen.